Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. Everything is in the Bible. That they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say to you, unto you they have received their reward. This is a serious matter. It is such a serious matter. You know what it means to receive your reward? Now, the Bible said, when you pray, whatsoever you desire, uh, if you believe, God is going to do it for you. Now, that, this is inclusive of this thing I'm going to tell you now. When you pray, if what you want is for people to say, oh no, I'm a, this, you be prayer man. You, that's what you want. God will answer it. So God will answer it and people will say you are a prayer man. That's the answer to your prayer. Because that's what you desired in your heart. So you can be that kind of person and you pray for five years, nothing came out. And then you see another person pray for three years or even three months and things began, began to come out because the Bible says when you pray, whatsoever you desire, God will answer it. So you desire for people to just call you a prayer man and God say, Amen. Look at this one. He said that when you fast too, if your whole desire in fasting is, this thing I'm saying, I've seen it. I have been, I have been praying for a while. Those days when we were in campus, there is a way you know Christian brethren. They must make you to know. There is a way you keep your face. You, you keep your face. People must know that you are fasting. If they don't know, how will they think you are making progress? If they don't know you are fasting, how will they even know you are making progress? Even when they don't know you, you find a way and tell them. <laughs> Have you not done it before? Are you looking at me as if I'm telling him something you have done? <laughs> when you tell them, they will say, Wow! Kai, you can fast! You can fast! You have received your reward. That's your reward. As simple as that it is. And I need to tell you that many times, Satan will set the trap for you to quickly receive reward from the fasting. And the real thing, the real power that can come from prayer and fasting will be taken. This is not where I'm supposed to go, but I need to show you the back door so that we'll close the back door first before we now open the front and load ourselves so that you don't go here and leak and leak this god will be loading you and he's leaking and you are wondering why your own is not producing it's because you are leaking you are basket it's you know basket it can't hold water even if you pour it to the brim two people pour to the brim the other one will leak his leakages many people leakages is their problem it's not as if god is not giving you something and satan is cunning he's cunning if he can't defeat you combat to combat, he can use cunningness, cunningness, cunningness and collect the thing that you have received. Look at, the Bible gave you instruction. He said, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head. What does it mean to anoint? There are sisters, if you are fasting, you, you can't arrange your hair, you can't do anything, you can't you can't even the brother won't even brush his teeth. See, let me tell you, somebody asked and said, if you are fasting, should you brush your teeth? Yes. You must brush your teeth so that people will know. You won't even change your clothes. You won't even do anything. The Bible is, is telling you, I'm not the one. They are the ones I used to say. But this one is the Bible saying, you have received your reward. Let me see one more verse. Let me see if he has something to say. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which is yet in secret shall reward thee openly. Let me say something before I go, before somebody will also take another, because there is always, you know, a balance to this. First one is this. Um, fasting and busy is not always very productive. I should tell you that praying and busy is not always productive sometimes you need to actually stay in a physical one place for you to be effective are you hearing what i'm saying yes sometimes fasting and cooking you know <laughs> sometimes you wake up in the morning you want to fast you are cooking washing clothes doing many things before you know it is six in the evening 
Now, I'm not saying there is no measure of help, but it's not the same thing as just keeping your Bible, putting worship before you, and be praying, and you didn't come out till evening. Now, both of them has benefit, but it's not the same. What you can achieve with three days of this dedicated one, you might not be able to achieve it with fasting and busy for, for seven days. Because this, the, the longer you stay with God, the easier it is for the Holy Spirit to affect you. Sometimes when it begins to affect you, you, you quickly run away. It begins to affect you, go. It begins to affect you, go. I was reading a book, I've forgotten which one by Benny Hinn. He said that one of the times, as he stayed with the Holy Spirit, stayed for long, he wanted to leave. He said, the Holy Spirit told him, just a little more time. When I heard that, it changed my life. I said, oh, so God will want to stay with you for a little more time? For some of us, we are already doing the right thing. Probably all we need is a little more time. Are you getting the point? This is the consequence of staying in the word of God for, for long. Not, I'm not saying reading your Bible in the morning. It's good. It's good. It's good. Bible morning devotion is good. It's good. But that's not what I'm talking about. If, if that's the kind of life you want to live, I'm not sure this kind of conference is for you. We want world changers. We want people that bear solution beyond themselves. When you walk the streets and see what is happening, are you not moved in your heart? Don't you have compassion? Sometimes the reason why I pray the way I pray is not because of anything. It's because of compassion. I have seen many things that I'm, I'm powerless. I can't do anything. I can't do anything about it. But I know that God can do something. That if I can yield myself to God to the demands that will make me into that kind of person he will use, I will become a conduit of help. A compassionate man is not the one crying. A compassionate man. There is a difference between sympathy and empathy. It's not the same. You see something happening and you are crying. If you are compassionate, beyond the cry, you will do something about it. Every time Jesus had compassion on somebody, he didn't leave the person the same. He did something about that. So, how many things have you done for people when you see the situation? You say, hi, hi, hi. Many times when I see people's problems, somebody saw me when my father died and he said that, he said that I'm, I'm hard-hearted, that my heart is too strong. Meanwhile, me, I'm crying more than them. The only thing is that tears did not come out from my eyes. I was using eyeglasses to cover my eyes. Because what was paining me is that how can something happen and you are helpless? And people just come here in the barrier, they are crying. They will cry and go. They are not willing to do anything about the situation. So that's my pain. It was going through my heart. They will finish crying in your barrier and go and cry in another barrier and keep crying. They are not doing anything about the situation. What we need are men that we pay. We do something and cause things to change. That's real compassion. It's not just talking about your situation. You discuss with... You di there is no need discussing with 10 people your situation that will not do anything about it. What you need is one man that can do something about it. What we need is just one of you here that is willing to carry God enough to bring solution to his generation. <laughs> 10 people that is talking about what... See... This is the lesson I learned very early. I said, God, I don't want to talk about revival. Just be telling me the price to pay. Leave me. Don't, don't tell me. See, it is more powerful for a man to do what it takes for power to come, to just be hearing about it and hearing the need that power can solve and hearing the things that God can do and the things that he said he will do. Yet, nothing is flowing through your vessel. I said, I will pay the price. I will carry in the secret place. Why am I alive? Why am I here? To so just record my name that I came. My, the one my father did is enough. Huh? If, I, if, if God can move through my life, if he can move through my life and shape my generation, then there is no need me being around. So when I enter the secret place, I say, God, don't leave me the same. Kappa, kappa. If I want to cry, I will not cry in the open. I cry in the secret. Many times my pillow is soaked with my tears. So that if I come out, I will wipe the tears of men. You will not remain like this. You can't. I forbid you. There is a generation in darkness. They are waiting for men that 
have touched God and carried something. Patela Kapa. Fanama Kapelia. Idea Pelakos. Oh my God. <laughs> ah. You will no more be powerless. A fountain of divine energy. Anybody bound by the power of the enemy? High voltage divine energy and power will come your way. High voltage. High voltage. Your problem and situation will be shaken in its root. The foundation of your affliction will be crushed. Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook and we are on Twitter. Thank you.